Lesson 9 is our first of four geometry lessons that deal with working with proofs. And here we're going to get kind of familiar with what a proof is. But first, let's talk about some postulates that we'll be using that will help us in our creation of different proofs. A postulate is a statement that we accept without proof. So postulates are like some of our rules that we use. And when we're applying deductive reasoning, we'll use these postulates to find new truths. And postulates are like the fundamental rules. We can use those to create theorems. Theorems, though, are proven by using postulates. That's the difference between a theorem and a postulate. Now, when we're talking about congruent figures, remember that means they have identical shapes. So, anytime you're trying to figure out if something is congruent, you have to have something to compare it to. You're looking at at least a pair of shapes. When we're doing proofs, we're mainly going to be concerned with triangles. Might be a few circles in there as well, but mainly it's going to be triangles. And here are four postulates that we use when we're comparing or trying to determine if two triangles are congruent, trying to prove if two triangles are congruent. The first one there is SSS and that stands for side, side, side. And what that means is if you have a pair of triangles and all three sides have the same lengths on those pair of triangles, then they are congruent. Another postulate is the SAS or side, angle, side. If you have two triangles and you're looking at two sides and the included angle, that means the angle in between them, like if here's a side and here's a side, this angle in between on that triangle. If you have two triangles and those two sides and the included angle are all the same, then those two triangles are congruent. Think about it. What does that mean? Let's just draw another triangle here. Try to draw it congruent. If they had this side and this side were the same, this side and this side were the same, and this angle and this one were the same. Well, think about it. That means that the sides opposite those similar angles, those must be the same as well. And then those angles opposite the similar sides, like that one there, this one there, those must be the same as well. So all the sides, all the angles are the same. That's how triangles are congruent. If all the angles, all the sides are the same. And that's why in a side, 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 you can have all three sides be the same length. or They just both have to have three lengths in common, basically. That's a better way of saying it. They don't all have to be, like, all three sides be equal in length. It's just that one triangle and the other one, they both have to have three sides that are the same length, three pairs of sides. Like on those two triangles, this side and this side are the same length. Those two are the same length. And then these two are the same length. And that means the angles opposite those sides are also the same. A third postulate is called the angle, 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 side postulate. And in this one, three angles, the three angles in the two triangles plus one side have to be equal. If you have that, then you have a congruent pair of triangles. And then the last one is called the hypotenuse leg. So hypotenuse, anytime you hear that word, you should think right triangle. And so here we're talking about right triangles. And let's just draw a couple. Let's say there's the 90 degree angle there. So if they have a hypotenuse of the same length and one leg, doesn't matter which one, let's say this one, then we know that that third one must be the same as well because we have those sides with the two tick marks. That means the angles opposite them have to be the same as well. So that means that third side, they have that in common, three sides in common, those are congruent. Four fundamental rules, or postulates we'll call them, that you need to know to help you prove other statements about triangles. It would be a good idea to write these down in your formula book and 
be really good to memorize these because you're going to use them a lot and just the more familiar you are with them the faster your math homework and your tests will go for you understanding what the rules are about is one thing applying them to new situations to find new truths out that's what wisdom is and so that's what we're that's what our goal is here is to eventually apply these four postulates to new situations and gain some wisdom and understand what wisdom is about look at a couple of practice problems here let's apply what we have learned about postulates tell me what postulate shows that the triangles in problem A and the triangles in problem B are congruent. What postulate would you use to prove that those triangles are congruent? Well look at A. We have a right triangle there so right away that should just make you think hypotenuse leg and do you have a hypotenuse and a leg that are in common? Well yes you do. You have that hypotenuse has one tick mark on it and then the one leg on each of those triangles has two tick marks so that means that they must have the angles opposite two tick marks which would be this one and that one those must be in common and therefore since they have two angles in common this third one has to be in common as well and so the sides opposite that angle are the same hypotenuse leg is the postulate that we use. Now look at B. We have two triangles there. We have to prove that they're congruent. We know they're congruent. We just have to prove, prove that. Which postulate would we use to prove it? Well, let's think about it. We have two sides with one tick mark and then another two sides with two tick marks. So they have two sides in common. That means we could use side angle side or side side side. Where we've got those two that we can work between. Well, think about this in the middle here. Both of these triangles have the same side in common right there. So that means they have three sides in common. Three sides of the same length. So that would be side, side, side. Would be the postulate we would use to prove those two triangles are congruent. Part B of this lesson is applying the postulates that we've just studied to prove some different relationships with triangles and look at practice problem C you've been given that AB is congruent to CB in that triangle and that segment AD is congruent to segment CD and they want you to prove that those two triangles ABD and CBD are congruent to each other well there's no exact way to do a proof outline what you need to do is think about the information that they've been given apply that to the triangle that you have there do that first so let's go ahead and do that first then we'll think about how to prove the statement in question so let's say AB is congruent to CB let's put one tick mark on each of those segments and then AD is congruent to CD let's put two tick marks on those so we know that we have those congruent segments we want to prove those two triangles are congruent so we have two sides here that we're dealing with that means we could have side 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 or side angle side to help us well let's think about it we have that side BD that both triangles have in common so what we do on that is just put a circle there to show that they have that side in common that means they have three sides in common we could separate that into two triangles right so we can prove triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD by the side 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 postulate and that's basically all we have to do that's outlining that proof we've made some sketches on our geometric shape there and then we've proven the, using that postulate that those two triangles are congruent. Let's try another one. Let's look at that geometric shape we have there. A couple of triangles we could break that up into and we have some given statements there that segment BC is congruent to DC and angle BCA 
is congruent to angle DCA. And they want us to prove that segment AB is congruent to segment AD. Now this one's a little different than problem C that we did. We have to prove that the two segments are congruent. We don't have to prove that the triangles are congruent, but what we should do, and this is normally what you do on these problems, in order to prove that those segments are congruent, we have to prove that the triangles are congruent first. Once we do that, then by default, those sides are corresponding parts, and so we can say that they are congruent. And that's what we should do anyway. We should apply what we do know. We know, how, know about these different postulates, these four postulates. We know we have some given information there. Let's go ahead and use that to help us solve this problem. And when we outline a proof, that's the first thing that we do is apply the given information using our tick marks. BC and DC are congruent. So let's put a tick mark there and there. And then angle BCA and angle DCA are congruent. So let's put a tick mark there and there. Now let's just think about it. We have an angle and a side there that we know are in common with each triangles with each triangle side angle side would be the best postulate if we could use it and remember that means the two, two sides and the angle in between them if those are congruent then the triangle is congruent and we have these sides that are lined up next to each other on the triangle remember we put a circle there to represent those two sides are in common and therefore we have proven that triangle B C A is congruent to triangle D C A by S A S by the side angle side postulate. So therefore we can say that A B that segment is congruent to segment A D by something called CPCTC. This is something to remember. Maybe you remember this from Algebra 2. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So we've proven that these two triangles are congruent. That means these corresponding parts here, BA and AD, they must be congruent as well. Even though we haven't shown that yet, we weren't given that information, we can prove it because the triangles are congruent. So what you have to do on these is use the given information to prove that the triangles are congruent. Once you do that, then you can prove that any other relationships between the two triangles are congruent as well. And you do that by that statement there. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So basically, here's our outline. This whole thing is our proof outline. We proved the triangles congruent by side angle side, and we have shown our different markings on the triangles applied our given information on the triangles themselves to help prove that they are congruent. We've applied the deductive reasoning process here. We've been we've taken some truths like the given information and also our postulates and we have learned something new. We have proven a new thing, a new truth about this triangle relationship here that those two sides are congruent to each other. So get familiar with those four postulates and how to use them. The next lesson on proofs, lesson 15, will get a little more organized in our proof writing. Okay, well that's all for lesson 9.